this is this is my brief of this offline. Uh, Quasho is a short video rec recommendation platform. Users in our app will always see one video at each time. In addition to that, he can like, share, or comment everything. And for our and for our work, we are aiming at use recommendation system and algorithms to reinforce users' long time experience in our app. That's a brief look of just like recognition of an industrial recommendation system. It always differs like uh, many stages. So we use reinforced learning in recommended system to reinforce users' long-term experience, or we call it long-term rewards. And in normal ways, we can use that to find a better personalized hyper parameters in many stages. For our team, we're working at in ranking stages. So we find some uh, uh, personalized hyper parameters in this stage to give user better performance. And specifically in our system, we are multi. We have multiple uh, objectives, so we have many predictions from from models in from the DNA models. And our team is to fusion these objectives to give each item a specific order in this ranking stage. So and send the ranked order to user in each response. And. In our background, we will face some computation burden and cost issues in our system. In, for short video platforms, the QPS in one day differs from time to time. In peak hours, we need large computational resources to give user better performance to return each response. But in off-peak rate, the resource will be idled. That's not cost effective. So in modern industrial architecture, in recommend system, we always use cache to to make a solution for this problem. Just like this, if the user first open our time at, at each day, we'll give her give him a real time recommendation, and that's the sorted items one to k, and the other top k items from l minus k, well, we put them into cache. So when each user came again, we have two choices. One is we give him the real time recommendation. One is we just Give, give him response from cached recommendations. So this brings problem and challenges for our learning in RL models. First, cached result is suboptimal compared to the results from real-time computation. It has big variance in user performance, just like on watch time or like or follow any interactive behaviors. And of course, the catch result is not affected by any ranking mode directly, so our IO model on, only works and the action works in real-time recommendation. That's a key feature in IO. And we give and I will give you a brief look of how the works if our IO works in these catch state systems. When user came, we will have a traffic router. It decides on user whether it goes to real-time recommendation or catch state. That depends on the computation burden and the user glo and the global resource requirement of this time at each day. If the resources burden is very heavy and we have many uh, user requests now and QPS is high in peak peak hours, the most many of the requests may go to cache state to serve user. So we define a cache state zero to real time recommendation and a cache state one to cache state. So each user will have a two state in our settings. It, if we look back of, of the above mentioned background, we can say we will face many challenges here. One is we lack of actions in the cache. Our will not performed when the request is in cache state. And, and this can contradict the assumption of IO to interact with the user continuously. And second, the cache state or real-time condition is unpredictable for our users. It's just not related to user state. It's just decided by the system burden and the user request. It's, diff it's different uh, each day the whole, from ours. And uh, the reward has big variance compared to just, just because the cache result is suboptimal compared to the uh, real-time state. Just because in our system, we need to online training and online serving. Each minutes, each hours is very important. So in time training, in time serving is very important. That matters in our system. So 
if we want to solve this problem directly, we introduce a, a direct learning of the cache-aware reference learning method. Just as uh, most cases in Q learning method, if we use TD error as a loss function, we can say we would do a loss like this. This is uh, not related to any catch state, it's just related to user state, state T, and next, state, next time step, state T plus one. And we can define a conditional credit function just because we have a, a stochastic variable about CT. It's, it's, if a CT is equals to zero, we can say it's real-time computation, and it equals one is catch computation. You can say from here that user can transit from state uh, state catch or to state rec recommendations from state this time and next next time step. Each time step each time step is can have two choices. So the next times also have two choices. If we define uh, the new loss function with our conditional credit function, we can do a loss like this. And from the last picture, we can see the user transit from each each state to other. We can use a state state function to de to define this. But this all, we call it DCT. This relies only on system state, not related to user state. It's just a stochastic variable. And we can break the uh, Q learning in reference learning into two parts. One is immediate reward, and one is, is expected long-term reward. And in our system, we define a uh, immediate reward like this. It's just related to the city state. And with this, we can rewrite the expected long-term reward like this. It's, com it's consists of the two parts, and one is the immediate reward, just like for Q0, it's related like the V0 is immediate reward, and the gamma is a uh, the, the, the decay ratio and the D0 T plus one is the next state. So each Q0, we can say Q0 is related to the Q1 and Q1 is related to Q0. They are not independent. So this brings much difficulty for our learning. We can formulate it like this. Each state has two choices. So we have four combinations of the Q0 and the Q1 like this. But of course, uh, we can train train model use use these samples and we can formulate the samples like this and of course we use this we deploy this online and and we have online a b a b a b gain in user engagement and user user time but we further thinking how to decouple q0 and q1 as in uh, question logs we have many logs each day but in reverse learning we can say the the, the log level is much less than a no, there are most cases supervised supervised model as we need have some some flow to uh, explore and the log is session level not item level so the log is much less than we normally say the supervised model so how to decouple the Q0 the Q1 to make the learn converge well and make the learning learning algorithms works well is a key problem for us so inspired by eigenvalue in a matrix combination we can say if if the two functions are just a linear combination of, of each other, we can find a, a eigenfunction or eigenvalue or eigenvector. They're just independent from each other. And we can do this like that to train the thing. So we introduce our eigenfunction way of learning the cow model. Just, just as I mentioned about, we also break the Q learning reward into two parts. One is immediate reward, as one is long-term reward. For the immediate reward, we can define a combination of the, uh, we can we can say gamma A and gamma B as a two. We we can we will use it as a eigenvalue or eigenvector later for the lambda. And with the immediate reward, we can get the eigen long-term reward like this. And for the lambda A and lambda B, it consists of Q zero and Q one. And we use the lambda a lambda b to recover q0 and q1. And we want what we want to do is we get the lambda a and the lambda b, which is independent from each other. And we can use lambda a and lambda b to recover q0 and q1. For the learning process, we were learning the independent functions lambda a and lambda b, and then calculate q0 and q1 directly. That's a exclusive map of the whole process. We can say. So lambda a is the same to gamma a. So and the lambda b is uh, is some some something with gamma b and the 
lambda b. And we can say lambda a and lambda d are independent. And for the purpose, we can learn the lambda a and lambda b, and we calculate q0 and q1 to get the our final q function. So the five steps of our engine function learning of car is like this, just like I mentioned before. We first learn the immediate rewards, and we calculate the eigen immediate rewards and the long-term rewards, gamma A and gamma B, uh, lambda A and lambda B. And we calculate the credit function and use this credit function to update our policy. Okay, uh, our environment setting may be a little different from the papers before, just because we are very uh, industrial system and uh, not many public data sets have the cash state. So we do our experiments our, for our online system. We compare to the uh, model RL methods and like TD3 and the RUR and the CARDL, CARDL is our method. And the CARDL, CARDL are both online now and get some AB gain for our cases. So this paper is, has some contributions, like I mentioned before. Uh, mostly, I just want to say how to, how to think problems with catch problems like this you know, industry problems. Just it will influence every every way and every models, something like that. So that's maybe a hint for all the uh, guests uh, you can you can think. And we are still continuous doing some work about this. Okay, of course we are hiring now. You can contact me anywhere. So. My talk is here. You have any questions? <laughs>